The energy in electromagnetic radiation is transferred to matter when the matter absorbs that energy. The details of the absorption process depend upon the wavelength of the electromagnetic energy and characteristics of the matter involved. When matter absorbs electromagnetic energy, that energy is absorbed by molecules as internal kinetic energy or by the electrons orbiting the nucleus. Electromagnetic radiation is characterized as ionizing or non-ionizing based on how it interacts with matter. Ionizing radiation transfers large amounts of energy to matter when it is absorbed, which makes it dangerous. Ionizing radiation carries enough energy that when an electron absorbs the energy, that electron is ripped from its orbital, completely separating it from the atom, thereby ionizing the atom. Both the positively charged atom and the highly energetic negatively charged electron are very reactive. The ionization of the atom puts both the atom and the electron in such energetically unfavorable states they will tend to interact with surrounding matter, ionizing other atoms, breaking bonds, and transferring energy in unpredictable and destructive ways. This is what makes ionizing radiation so dangerous. Non-ionizing radiation is longer wavelength, lower frequency radiation that does not have enough energy to strip electrons from atoms. When interacting with an atom, non-ionizing radiation is either absorbed by the entire atom, increasing its internal kinetic energy, or it's absorbed by a, a single electron. When it is absorbed by an electron, it does not completely remove the electron. Instead, the absorption of that energy kicks the electron up from its stable orbital to a less stable, more energetic orbital. This is an energetically unstable state for the atom, but not as bad as a complete loss of the electron. Atoms in this state return to a more stable state when the energy in the unstable electron is released back into the surrounding environment as electromagnetic energy. The re-radiation of that energy allows the electron to fall back to its normal orbital, returning the atom to a stable, energetically favorable state. There is no exact point of separation between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation because the potential for radiation to ionize an atom depends to some extent on the characteristics of the matter involved but the transition from non-ionizing to ionizing radiation occurs somewhere in the high ultraviolet range. Because electrons can only orbit atoms in a fixed number of specific energy states, not all electromagnetic energy can be absorbed by all types of matter. Electrons can only absorb energy if that quantity of energy absorbed puts the electron in an allowable orbit. Of course, if the radiation has high enough energy, it can ionize the atom, completely removing the electron, but if it is non-ionizing radiation, it must give the electron the exact amount of energy needed to bump it up from a stable orbital it started in to another allowable orbital. And then, when that excited electron drops back down to its original stable orbital, the energy it absorbed is re-radiated as electromagnetic energy with a longer wavelength and lower frequency than the energy it initially absorbed. Given the number of electrons in the atom of each element, there is a fixed number of energies that can be absorbed by the atoms of any particular element, and a fixed number of energies associated with the re-release of that energy when the electrons return to their stable state. The way that different wavelengths of electromagnetic energy interact with different types of matter have value for both the basic and applied sciences. Understanding the energetics of these interactions help explain why certain atoms and molecules play outsized roles in supporting life on Earth and exert strong influence on our climate, while other molecules are much less important.